Property sales in the GTA in February were down significantly year over year, but they still remain very high historically. It's no surprise that prices have continued to rise. In February, I started to see three strong trends coming out of the data. At the start of COVID, there was a huge flight to the suburbs. The downtown core really emptied out. There was no reason to be there anymore. Nightlife, entertainment were gone. Sports weren't happening anymore. You couldn't even go to the office if you wanted to because it was shut. So I think the flight to the suburbs is over and I'm starting to see that in the actual sales trends and numbers. In the 416 region, which is the central area of Toronto, sales were down 14% versus down 20% in the 905 region. And the 416 region for detached sales were 11% lower, while the 905 was 21% lower. So I'm calling it right now. I think the flight to the suburbs is over. The downtown core is looking much more appealing and people are starting to flock back there, especially now that all of the COVID restrictions are essentially over. And the sales trend is starting even before there's any push by companies for their workers to return to the office. So I think this trend is really going to accelerate and the downtown core, especially on the rental side, is going to outperform over the next six months. Whenever I talk to any clients, their order of preferences for housing is always a detached house, that white picket fence. When they can't afford that, they drop down into a semi-detached home. And when they can't afford that, then it's a town home. Now, affordability of any low rise property is getting increasingly difficult because affordability is eroding for most people. This naturally pushes people into condos then because they become the affordable option. And the price gap between the low rise houses and the condos grows. So there's a huge gap and a huge price difference. I'm seeing this trend where condo sales were 14% lower year over year whereas overall sales for the market were down 16.8%. Year to date in 2022, condo sales represented 32.5% of the total market, while in 2021, they were 30.5%. Now, while this looks like a very small percentage change, you're looking at a billion dollar market. These are actually huge numbers and huge shifts in money that's being spent in condos, not in low rise housing. Many people saw their life savings evaporate while trying to weather COVID. People in the service industry, in tourism, in sports and entertainment, many of them, their jobs simply disappeared overnight. However, many others saw their wealth grow significantly. The stock market initially crashed when COVID started and now has gone on to double in value. Toronto average house prices are up over 30%. Bitcoin went from 5,000 to over $45,000. Even many sport and trading cards have doubled in value. So there's a lot of money out there and it's starting to be seen in the high-end condo market, which has actually grown faster than the overall market itself. For the first two months of 2022, 48 condos over $2 million were sold versus just 30 last year. And I expect this segment of the market continue to grow, especially as people flock back down to the downtown markets. At the beginning of COVID, the market in downtown Toronto is absolutely flooded with studio and one bedroom units. These are the types of units that most first time investors and people starting out buy with and start to build their portfolio with. And these people were panicking. Now, if you look at the market downtown today, that has completely changed. I took a look at one of the biggest condo towers downtown, College Park at 763 Bay. It's 51 stories high and has 655 units in it. Naturally, you think there'd be a couple units available for sale. Currently, there are zero one bedroom units available. And over the last two years, there's actually only been 42 sales. This lack of inventory has naturally led to an increase in prices. The one bedrooms in that building are up about 10% over the last 16 months. The true story though, is how much one bedroom plus dens in the same building have appreciated. They're up about 19%. Now, I think this is entirely related to the necessity of needing to work from home. And I've continually seen a trend towards bigger units and one bedroom plus dens where you can have that dedicated work set, workstation. If you're gonna be buying a unit, it has to come with an area where you can at least set up a desk if it's a one bedroom. And the one bedroom plus den is absolutely higher demand from a rental and resale perspective. Now, looking at the rental market downtown, 
the supply of condos available to be rented was just over 2,000 units by March, which was about the same availability as the previous month. The number of condos that were actually rented in February was very similar to January at just under 1,500 units. This is showing that demand and supply have really remained unchanged and the market has really started to stabilize. Now, there's just under a two-month supply of inventory, which is actually very low. So I expect this to continue to have upward pressure on prices for rent. Expect those rents to continue to increase. And when you're looking at market trends, you really need to look at the non-rent control buildings to actually identify what's happening in the marketplace. During COVID, many people had negotiated rent discounts or moved into units because they could find cheaper rent. Now, looking at buildings that were built or registered after November of 2018, those rent controls have been lifted. I expect tenants in those buildings to see increases of at least 5%, likely approaching the double digit market. Those units built or registered before November 18th, they're gonna see increases of only 1.8% because that's what the provincial guideline states and the most those landlords can raise the rent. These units are gonna skew the market numbers lower. So if you see an average rent of 3%, it's actually much, much higher than that because of the rent control buildings. Now, something interesting to look at for the rental numbers of February, over 70% of the units rented were actually one bedroom or one bedroom plus dens. These remain by far the most popular unit to be rented in the downtown market. Three bedrooms were just about 2% of the entire market. I really expect that number to actually increase and I see huge potential and value in the two bedroom and three bedroom market segments for rent and for resale purposes.